Hello, my name is Karen Perry, and I am going to walk you through my sketchnote reading autobiography. I was born in 1971, and I was born to very young parents, but I'm lucky enough that they knew the importance of having books around me. So they've always been a part of my life. In my, um, as you can see, I separated my reading autobiography in um, different periods of my life. The early years, elementary school years, junior high, for me was sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Nope, I'm lying. That's what it is here in middle school. For junior high, for me, it was seven, eight, and nine. High school years for tenth was um, tenth through twelfth. And then I have my 20s because I just really was trying to get to that time after high school. Uh, so in my 20s, and then I transition along the bottom of the sketch note from um, my late 20s when I um, started teaching fifth grade, then when I went to library school and started working with all ranges of children's literature, to now when I am um, an assistant professor at Sam Houston State University and uh, what I'm kind of reading now. So I'm gonna walk you through everything. So my early years, um, you can see that I listed books as presents uh, because there's a picture of me in um, 1973 when I was 22 months old during Christmas and my mother is helping me open a book and looking through a book that you can see that I'm just fascinated with. And it was a pop-up book of nursery rhymes, and I love that book. Um, other books that really stick out to me during that time were a lot of the little golden books that you can see that I have um, highlighted here with my attempt at recreating Pokey Little Puppy. Um, but I also loved The Sweet Smell of Christmas, and that was a scratch and sniff golden book. And I remember loving the hot chocolate page because I would scratch it so much that it really started to rub through to where I was definitely losing the smell of, of the hot chocolate. Um, but my mother tells me that my very, very favorite was Lassie. I loved the Lassie Golden Books stories, and I would ask for her to read those aloud to me. So you can see that I have Lassie represented there with a head talking with mom labeled and it as saying, read aloud. My mother did that for me. Um, I also liked Scruffy the Tugboat. And something that they did for me that I think was really, really um, great was they shared with me, they put me in the Disney Book of the Month Club. And um, so that means every month I got, um, a, it was a large hardback book with a story told um, that was a Disney story, and so it, you, it followed the, the illustrations that you would find in like the cartoons, the movies that they would do. And there's a picture of me uh, sick on the couch at home with my, uh, I had, a, there's a paper sack next to the trash can where I'm throwing all my Kleenexes, and it was um, four years old, and next to me on the, on the coffee table next to my, uh, sickness being on the couch is one of my very favorite Disney Book of the Month books, which was Robin Hood, which I definitely represented here with Robin Hood's hat. It's one of my very favorite Disney movies on top of everything else. I just love the, the, that story and the way it was represented um, through Disney. I just really enjoyed it. Um, so that was pretty much my my early years. Um, let's see, uh, Dr. Seuss, of course, is represented there with my uh, cat in the hat hat. But then as we moved into my elementary years, um, things that uh, stick out are Ramona. Ramona was one of my very favorite series. Um, and series reading is, is really a, a stage of reading for most kids that they, they really get involved with these characters and follow them along through all of their adventures. And, you know, they're, it's comforting to know that you're going to be able to come back to these people that you have uh, kind of fallen in love with. And so I loved reading the books like Ramona and Her Mother, Ramona and Her Father, um, 
just all of those are normal books, of course. Another one that really, really sticks into my mind is Freckle Juice. And I, um, you know, it was a really thin, thin book, uh, but so impactful for me, a Judy Bloom, early Judy Bloom for me. Um, SRA kits, I'm sure a lot of people have experiences with SRA, and it's not um, something that necessarily encourages pleasure reading, of course, but as a reader, where I already knew that I liked to read, it was not a bad thing for me. It wasn't intimidating for me, where it can be for some. For me, as a kind of a competitive person or self-motivated, I got into SRA because I would see how fast I could read those cards, take the test so I could move up colors. And for me, that really drove me. And so SRA was a huge part of my elementary years. Another thing that I just absolutely loved were the book order flyers that got sent home. There was nothing better than ordering that stuff, than coming back from recess, and having your stack of books that you ordered with your little slip sl slipped inside of the page, um, and you get to go through all of your stuff when you, when you come in. I loved it when I got to order from those book, pot, book flyers. I saved the best for last, or the most impactful. For me, The Bridge to Terabithia by Katherine Patterson was the most impactful book for me during these times. Um, I read it in fifth grade, and it was the first book that made me cry. And um, like I said, I'd, I'd already been a reader. Um, it's not like I didn't already like reading, but this is the first book I think that really resonated a major emotion to me rather than just humor, you know, or enjoyment. This one, I was so torn up. Um, at the end of this book, of course, and it will forever be one that is stuck in my mind as um, really an important book for me. Um, it is one that I will, you know, I'll see movies that are made of books quite often. I, I, I enjoy that, but that is one movie adaptation that I did not go see because I didn't want for anything to ruin my experience and my love for that all right, so I'm moving into junior high. So for me, that was grades seventh, eighth, and ninth. You know, so this time I'm done reading the children's books, uh, and I've moved on to things that, frankly, were probably definitely not meant for my age range. Um, ex well, except for maybe you'll see Judy Blooms Forever, which I have there. Um, but you know, it's 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 common for people or for kids to read a book. You know, so. Um, but I was, I read, you'll see, I read, oops, oh, I'm hitting the wrong thing, sorry, sorry, I'm giving you guys a headache, I know. Um, I read The Catcher in the Rye during my junior high years, and I did this because my mother, um, as you know from my early years, she was the one that read aloud to me. My mother also was a reader herself, and so she always had books. And so I, this is the time where it's starting what we're reading, kind of maybe reading some of the same things. I borrowed, it was her book that she had when she was in school or college or something. And so I read, I read it because she read it. So I borrowed The Catcher in the Rye and read this during my junior high years. Um, as I mentioned already, Judy Blooms Forever. Uh, this is a book that I, you know, didn't necessarily shout off the rooftop, rooftops that I was reading, didn't let my mother necessarily know to discuss this with her because this was a book about a girl's first sexual experience and so as a junior high student I didn't want to be talking about those things with my mother. Um, however, of course, I'm no no problem talking to her about flowers in the attic where incest is taking place, but you know, whatever. Um, I flew through those V.C. Andrews books and, um, you know, read the series from, you know, I tried to I do like to try and read in order. That was that's one of my that was one of my things. And you'll see it's about this time that I started keeping track of um, my reading. And I would read them. I would read books in. Um, I'm sorry. I would keep track of the books in like one of those little small memo notebooks, you know, with spiral bound. And I would write an author on a certain page, and I would write 
down the titles of the books that they have and if they weren't if they were in series definitely in that order but if not I kind of put them in order of publication and then I would try and track down all the books that I could and read read the, the books by those authors and BC Andrews was definitely one of those now you'll see that I've got Stephen King written in a huge huge big old blob here in the middle well of course that big old blob represents blood splatter and you know because Stephen King is scary and creepy and gory it's because Stephen King appeared in my life in my junior high years. And so the arrow points to junior high. It also points over, I'm going to go ahead and scooch over, to high school. And then it extends to my 20s as well. Now the reason for Stephen King being in this time in my life is because, again, my mother loved Stephen King and still does. But I've read the books that she had in the house. So one of my favorites by Stephen King, uh, At this time, I was getting sidetracked for a minute. I also read Anne Rice with Mother during these times too. And my favorite Anne Rice book is The Mummy. Um, anyway, okay. But during my high school years here, um, the most important book for me probably was It. Um, and it was a, to show how much I liked, I guess, this book and this author. Um, I remember my boyfriend that I had during my 16th birthday bought me the paperback of it and it rep is represented right there my paperback look it had that cover um, and so that was my big thick book birthday present from my boyfriend on my 16th birthday um, I also read John Saul um, a, a lot of his I kept track of all of his and uh, and read them and so I've got suffer the children and comes the blind fury and so there's just a you know a uh, so many of them that, that he read, River wrote, that I would follow along with. Um, so definitely reading adult books during my high school years. Um, as you can see, I have where I said I kept track of reading. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to span that out there. So there in the center, used bookstores goes from high school to the 20s. I really visited used bookstores a lot during these years. Like I said, I had my list, and you see there in the middle where it, the piece of paper here it has Dean Koontz. Um, and I have um, it on a piece of notebook paper where I would check out, like I said, check off all the books that I had. Um, and that's how I kept track of my reading then. Now, I love it because my grandpa would do the same thing. He wrote, he had lists of books uh, by the authors, or by um, his author that he tried to track books down from, and his were mostly Louis L'Amour, but I love that he kept track of books, too, and, you know, just checked them off as he found them and read them. Um, so, of course, Stephen King stays in my, in my, um, my 20s. During the 20s, during my 20s, though, um, my favorite Stephen King was this is the stand was the stand and that still stand that still remains my favorite Stephen King book. Uh, I cannot wait to see the new movie adaptation of this one. I you know it was kind of cheesy, but I really did enjoy the TV miniseries with Gary Sinise and Molly Ringwald, uh, and Rob Lowe. I liked the the miniseries um, of the stand, and but the book of course is much better. Uh, during my 20s, that wasn't the only move, uh, TV or movie adaptation I read. I really had a lot of these. Lonesome Dove. I remember when I was watching the miniseries, I also read the novel and uh, loved it. Uh, Elvis and Me. Couldn't get enough of that Elvis and Me. I loved that. Um, and then Alive, the story of the Andes survivors. You know, that the movie was incredible, but the book, of course, was definitely so so um and it's just incredible story um so that's kind of where i stuck with during this this time in my life other than continuing to read the stephen king and the dean Koontz. you know i've never lost the creepy dark period i've always enjoyed that so um once i when I was about 20, you know, anyway, mid-20s, I then went 
into education and became a fifth grade teacher. Once I did that, fifth grade, the big thing in fifth grade in social studies was the American Revolution. And so I read so many historical fiction novels that went along with my social studies curriculum that that became a big focus for me. Um, the authors that you see listed there are, um, on the scroll there are Karen Cushman, um, Scott O'Dell, Anne Rinaldi, she was one of my favorites. Jean Fritz was a major um, fave of mine. Karen Hess, Avi. So a lot of historical fiction for me during this time. But then, um, it's like 2000, I went to library school at the University of Oklahoma and became a school librarian. And as a school librarian, then of course, I expanded everything and went back to um, children's literature. And of course, so the, um, where the wild things are, the wild rumpus there, the Max's crown up above, and the very hungry caterpillar. Of course, I love the grouchy ladybug. You know, so this all just wonderful, wonderful. Got to revisit so many favorite picture books again. But then I discover new ones, you know, like, hey, don't let the pigeon ride the bus. And, you know, reading to those kids was wonderful. And I'm one of those people that enjoy the books just as much as the kids did. Um, so as I'm moving now, you know, I, I've, I've, um, I not only you'll be able to see there that I, you know, read graphic novels, I listen to audio books, I read print books, but primarily now I read on my e-reader, my Kindle. Well, I don't read on a Kindle, I read on my iPad I read on my iPad Mini most of the time and read using through the Kindle app. Um, and I do this mainly because of convenience. When I go on a trip, I can now take my, my iPad and have so many books at my fingertips rather than taking up weight in my suitcase with books. Um, also, I can read at night easily because I don't have to keep the light on and keep my husband awake. So it's just convenience that I'm reading on the e-reader primarily. Now I'd say I said approximately 75%. I still read some print books. All of my picture books are print, of course. Really, uh, most of my graphic novels are in print. Um, sometimes they're hard to read on an e-reader because print can be really small, and um, so the print book is um, much better for graphic novels for me. Um, some e-readers like the, the, if you buy it at a Kindle graphic novel. It does allow you to tap the panels and it makes it bigger for you. So that does make it um, a little bit more enjoyable to read. So um, so that's that's kind of the format that I'm reading on now is the E. Um, I use Goodreads to keep track of my reading now instead of pencil paper. And, um, it, you know, you can create shelves on there. And so I have one for every year. So each year I create a new shelf and every book that I read that year, I tag for that shelf. So I have a running number of, um, of books that I've read for the year. I also participate in the Goodreads Reading Challenge every year. And so it keeps track of what I've um, finished in the year and then adds to my total. And so I've upped that number every year and uh, I'm going for 600 books this year. And I'm almost to 500 now, so I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm set, to, I'm hoping to make it. Now, I read that, I read YA, I read adult, I read um, children's picture books, easy books, or easy readers, I read graphic novels, I listen to audio, so all of that counts toward my reading, as it should for anybody. So, um, now, in addition to reading my children's, middle grade and YA novels, I also read, like I said, adult, new adult, and I read some um, racy, edgy erotica, so I listed with the triple X there in the pouch, oh, wow, wow, so, you know, I'm, you know, that's, I, I, I slip those in too, um, and, you know, I do that because it's an escape, and, man, you don't have to really think when you're reading those, you can just scan and skim and read for the enjoyable um, 
whatever, racy parts. So now as a Sam Houston State University um, assistant professor of library science, you have kind of seen where I am now and how I got there through um, the books that have been influential in my life. So I definitely want to thank my parents for knowing how important books are and how I needed to own books and have them at my fingertips in my room. Um, reading, maybe not with me, meaning it's not like we're reading the same book, but definitely reading the same books at different times so we could talk about it. So thanks to my mother for that. And now I want to thank my um, friends and colleagues. Um, when I was a, a librarian, my friend Julie Graves was my library assistant, and she was wonderful. Uh, she was She's such a big reader, and we shared books and read books and talked books all the time. And it was wonderful to have a partner in the library that knew how important it was to read with kids. As a library assistant, she didn't have to read and talk books with kids if she didn't necessarily want to, but she did. She focused on reading children's and um, YA books, so she could talk to kids about reading, and I appreciated that so much. Uh, now I work with Terry Lassane, and she is a great uh, mentor to me, but she's also a great book buddy. Along with Rose Brock, is also huge in the book world, and I am fortunate to have her down the hall for me to where we can talk books and audio and um, really share um, things back and forth. So thank you to everyone that's been in my reading life. And I hope that you um, found some things that maybe we have in common. And if that's the case, let me know. Well, did you like some of the books that I mentioned? Um, did you have some of the same experiences? If so, send me an email um, at kperry at shsu.edu and let me know. I'd love to hear um, about your experiences. And if you decide to draw um, a sketch note of your reading autobiography, send me a copy. I'd love to see it.